This is Kate Swoboda, creator of YourCourageousLife.com, director of the Courageous Living Coach Certification at TeamCLCC.com, and author of the book, The Courage Habit, which is available at booksellers and at Amazon. The Your Courageous Life podcast is all about going after what you want and creating and living a more courageous, emotionally resilient life. Might drop a couple of F-bombs, so maybe don't listen with your kids in the backseat of the car. And here we go with today's episode. Hey, everybody. It is Kate Swoboda, also known as Kate Courageous. And before we get started today, I just wanted to say thank you to those of you who have taken a moment to offer a little rating for the Your Courageous Life podcast. I work really hard at it, and uh, it's really nice to just see a little rating happen because uh, that helps more people to learn about the podcast. And it also helps me to not feel like I'm just talking out into the void. You know what I mean? If you would like to leave a rating, if you have never done that before, it's so appreciated. And if not, hey, no worries. I still think you're great anyway. So there's that. Ha ha. You can't change my mind. Um, all right. Let's talk about today's topic, taking charge of your life might seem like a bit of a surprise topic, a little bit of a, you know, because I'm recording this during COVID-19 happening and might feel a little bit like, what you talking about, chick? Because there's not a lot that I can do to take control of my life right now. This podcast is going to be aimed at questioning that story. And it can be really difficult to start changing stories. And particularly when you are completely hooked by a story, the suggestion by someone else that maybe there is an alternative way to frame the situation can be met with some degree of irritation. Like, who's this Pollyanna chick when the world feels like it's falling apart coming in here saying, you can take charge of your life? It can feel daunting. Like, okay, I'm intrigued by the possibility Ability that I could take charge of my life in some profound ways, particularly right now, but how? And I get it. You might be thinking to yourself, like, I just got to do me right now. Like, I, I can't take on anything else. And so here's what I'll say before you click off of this episode. Just consider that if I know of something that is effective that has borne out to be effective both in my experience working with clients as well as, I'm big on this, I check things out on the academic literature circuit. You know, I'm, I'm in there, I'm looking at like what is actually effective. If I knew of something else that was really effective, I promise you I'd be on the podcast yakety yakking about that other thing that's really effective. And deciding to take charge of your life and question the internal narrative that there is nothing you can do to take charge of your life in some pretty profound ways is something that I have seen in my own personal life, in my work with clients, and that I have also seen to bear out in the clinical research into what helps people with things like anxiety, depression, fear, sadness, grief, the metaphor, the frame that you use for any situation that you're going through is one that will have a lot of impact on how it all goes. If the way you're thinking of the world in this pandemic is, oh my God, it's like we're all on a sinking ship and it's just leaking slowly and we're just like, well, guess what? You're, you're not going to be feeling very good. But if you are taking this on like, all right, rolling up my sleeves because I'm not going down like that, then I think you'll be feeling a little bit better. And it, the choice is all yours. So speaking of choice, if we're going to talk about taking charge of your life, qu- consider this question. Do you really understand that you're the one in charge? Like really, do you really understand you are the one in charge of your life. And if you have had a bunch of stuff rush to the forefront of your mind with how you are not in control or in charge of that thing, let me clarify a little bit what I mean. Now, are you in control or in charge of COVID-19 
or the economy or the hiring and firing decisions at your business or whether or not schools are open or closed? Probably not. That's not what I'm talking about. What you are in charge of is where you place your intentions and where you place your attention and whether you respond or you react. And I know I have said this before on other podcasts, and we're going to dive into that a little bit more today, particularly around taking charge of your life by taking charge of those anxious thoughts. But I did want to make sure that I said something first where I was just like really clear. I am not trying to do like, oh, like if you want to, you can just bend, bend spoons. You're that good. Um, I don't know (laughs) if you can do that. It's a pretty cool skill. Show me how, um, but I get it. The things that are going on in the world and with illnesses and with families and with the economy, they're not under your direct control. I'm not saying take charge of your life by somehow pretending that if you just visualize it enough, everything in your life is going to magically flip and be different in all the ways that you want it to be different. What I'm saying is that when life hands us a shit sandwich, we are in charge of whether or not we eat it. What I'm saying is that when we are feeling most discouraged, we can choose the story that we want to tell about the situation story as in you can tell the story of it's a sinking boat and you can tell the story of rolling up my sleeves. Let's go. It's go time. So just consider that again, that question one more time. Do you really understand, really understand that you are the one in charge of your life? To really learn from these questions, give yourself space. I'm going to ask the question one more time and I'm going to be quiet for perhaps an uncomfortably long time. Do you really understand that you are the one in charge of your life? Nobody else, nobody else's responsibility, nobody else's business. You are the one in charge of your life. And now consider too, that if any part of you has thought, well, I, I, I think I understand it logically. I just don't feel like I'm really in charge of my life. That's what we're going to talk about today. So you are the one who is in charge of your life. I can't say anything on this podcast that is going to fix, you don't need to be fixed, but fix to use the, the terms of the day, fix you. You are the one who decides to listen to what I'm saying and either treat it as relevant and then start putting it into action or not. And the economy doing better is not something that you're in charge of, but you are in charge of your intentions. What are your intentions for how you spend what money you do have access to? What are your intentions for where you're living and what expenses you're willing to keep having, what are your intentions around how you will weather what is almost certainly very tight economic times that is still remaining to be borne out as of me recording this in the spring of 2020, but it looks like the economic forecast is not great. So what are your intentions? And then where are you placing your attention Are you placing your attention on news headlines that are making dire projections, which by the way, are sometimes wrong. And that is not me saying in any way, shape or form that COVID-19 should not be taken seriously. I'm taking it seriously. I've been doing shelter in place for a month now. As of recording this, we are, you know, like wearing the masks before anybody ordered us to wear a mask when going out. We were already doing all of those things. So I'm, I'm taking this very seriously. What I'm saying though is where do you want to place your attention and are you placing your attention on the most dire statistical models 
instead of on the fact that I just read a news article today in which California, the state where I happen to live right now, has restructured their interpretation of how many people are going to die as a result of this. They've downgraded it from something like 6,000 people to 1,500 people. Of course, anytime a life is lost, it's not good. I'm not at all being dismissive. Oh, it's only 1,500, as if those 1,500 lives don't matter. Of course they matter. I'm just trying to point out that, in fact, the dire prediction is not what always comes true. And I'm pointing that out for you, and I am raising my hand, and I am a peer facing this alongside you who has needed other people to point that out for me, too, when I have been in my fear. And just consider, too, that if you read a headline that is making a dire prediction about something that is predicted to happen, and you go into a total space of fear, if you later end up finding out that the situation is not quite as dire, do you ever take a moment to go, hmm, I was reacting to what I read instead of responding. Reacting is I go straight into fear or grief or anxiety Instead of, hold on, let me, let me slow down and respond. And fear, grief, and anxiety are not bad. I do not pathologize emotion. If those are the places you went to, well, you know what? You got in touch with your feelings. <laughs> That's great. You're human. You know, you're going to feel things. Now let's get back to, though, how much can we create the experience where you are lifted up and feeling more resilient, not less resilient as a result of the thoughts you're thinking or the places where you're putting your intention or your attention? And how can we get you into more of a space of responding rather than reacting? Well, in my experience, it's a lot of falling down on your butt and getting back up again. So have I had total fear surrounding What's happening with coronavirus, fears that people I love could be impacted, fears about how it's going to impact myself or other people economically, fears about my child who is an only child and what it's like for her emotionally to go this long without contact with other children. Of course. Yes, absolutely. What's not helpful is ruminating. That's the biggest thing I want to point out. What's not helpful is ruminating. You are in charge of what you ruminate on. You can't police every single thought you have. Thoughts just happen. They flit around like little gnats, right? They just kind of come and they go. It's when we grab one of those thoughts, hook on to it, attach to it, think that it's true, ruminate on it, recycle it over and over and over and over. That is something that we actually can take charge of. You can take charge of your life and those anxiety producing, anger producing, fear producing, sad producing thoughts by saying, no, I'm in charge of what I think about. I'm in charge of what I ruminate on. And this is a discussion I've been having with just about every single client that I've been working with for one-on-one coaching uh, recently. And the metaphor that I offer is if someone who you knew had COVID was standing right outside of your door, would you let that person in and just be like, come on in, let me give you a close hug. You can lay all over my furniture, breathe all over my stuff here. Do you want to touch some of my food? No, of course not. No, you would not open the door and let that person in. Well, it's a similar kind of thing with your thoughts. If you are having anxiety-producing, fear-producing, sad-producing thoughts that are just bringing you down in that psychological undertow and the chaos of what's happening right now, you are going to be aware that the thoughts are outside your door You are the one who gets to say whether or not you open the door and let those thoughts come in. 
or if you are the one who keeps the door closed. I'm aware that you're out there. You do not get to come and take up residence in my home. It's my home. I say who gets to live here. Your head is the same way. It's your head. You decide what gets to live there. Things will pass by, but you decide what gets to live there. So you do not have to recycle anxious thoughts. So, okay, maybe you're thinking then, all right, great, Kate, I'm buying in to what you're saying. Now, how, 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 because the anxiety producing thoughts are like driving me crazy. Well, for one thing, uh, filter, you got to filter. Like the news headlines do not make money off of nice, calm, methodical, logical, unbiased, straightforward, let's just keep the long perspective news stories. They make money with clickbait headlines, fear-inducing headlines that have you click over or that have you turn the volume up. You could just look at a, a like a Google News aggregator, news.google.com, that'll just kind of pull together a little list of stories. You could check that once a day in the morning and great, you are an informed citizen. Put it away, let it go. Put it away, let it go. You are not someone who needs to be aware of every single news headline that is out there. It's actually not helpful. Do you want to do what is actually helpful I hope you do, because if you want to do what's actually helpful, overloading yourself with news headlines that you have no control over is how you give your power away to take charge of your life. You stop, hold on, I'm going to minimize some of the input. And then what do you do? So you're minimizing input, then what? How do you come to the present moment? One of the nicest things I've noticed about this time is how often there's been an invitation there, an opportunity there to really look at the things that haven't changed. Like I take a walk in the morning and I notice that the air still smells like a Northern California morning this time of year. And I notice that the starlings are still making their same sounds. And I notice that I see the bus head down the street I notice the things that are the same. I notice that I still think chocolate is amazing. I notice that I still love Fixer Upper. If you did not know this about me already, here it is. Breaking news, everybody. Fixer Upper, the show. (laughs) It's my happy place. Makes me so happy. I don't know why. (sighs) It's just, yeah, it's, it's one of those little funny things about people. You know, books that you have read before that are your favorite books. You could read those again the feeling of holding a pencil in your hand and sketching something on paper, the way that your pillow feels when you lay your head down at night. There are so many things that are not changed by what's going on with COVID. And I know it can feel very difficult to pull your focus back into those things to bring presence at a time when your somatic system might be telling you, you got to pay attention to everything because there's danger and oh my God, I know, I know, I know, and you got to pull it in. You got to pull your power back to yourself. Take charge of your life. You are the one who gets to say how you react or respond. You are the one. Another thing that I've been doing a lot of is process work or discharging emotion, And I have mentioned on other podcast episodes on how to regulate emotion. And I know it's come up multiple times um, with conscious crying and punching pillows and doing what you need to do to get emotion out. But I'll just say again, like, I know that our culture gives us a lot of messages that crying is a weakness. And I am just here to tell you that is such bullshit. When you cry, you release cortisol, You give yourself space to actually vent some of the emotion that's been pent up. I think it's helpful to set a timer so that it's not becoming an all day kind of thing, but take that time to cry, but also take that time to be in the joy. Dance, 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 laugh. And I know 
I get it. This is not cool stuff. You're not listening to any of this. Like, what do you mean? I'm just supposed to like sit in my apartment or my house or whatever and just start laughing. Yeah, you are. (laughs) I mean, there's not a supposed to, right? You do you, but yeah, this is the medicine. If you are hungry, I want you to have food. If you are sad, anxious, angry, frightened, I want you to have the antidote to that and movement, laughter. Those are antidotes to that, as are allowing yourself to be angry when you're actually angry. Not taking it out on other people, but angry as in you can scream into a pillow, you can punch a pillow, you can stomp your feet. Do something that actually moves some of the emotion that creates a change in your state or an emotional shift. This is part of taking charge of your life. And, you know, I have, I just recently had a situation where I was talking about some of this stuff and someone insinuated that maybe I was having an easier time with it because of this, that, and the other thing going on that, you know, and it's just like, no, it's not an easier time. I know of at least one person in my family who is older, has several underlying conditions, and has tested positive for COVID. Not in our home, but, you know. And uh, the prognosis is not great. Um, My husband's job had some shakeups, so financially things are being hit. He's still employed. It just, it, there were some shakeups. We're moving to a new state pretty soon and some stuff with our housing has come up in the air. I have been needing to make difficult decisions about hiring and how many people we have on our team that feel really difficult. It's, there have been a lot of things I haven't liked about this entire situation Plenty of them. Plenty of tears have been shed. Plenty of what are we going to do has been said. Plenty of I don't know what the hell to do with what I've been handed today has happened. And when I have one of those days where I don't know what the hell to do with what I've been handed, it's like, okay, I don't have an answer for this yet, but here's what I do know. I'm taking charge of my life in the sense that A, I know that I am the one in charge of this. B, I don't have to spin in anxious thoughts about this. Like it's, it's like, I understand this is something that I do not like. And there's some anxiety here about what's going to happen in the future. Got it. Roger that. And interrupting those thoughts when they try to intrude yet again and discharging emotion, crying when I need to cry, screaming into a pillow when I need to scream. So what is it you need to be doing? to take charge of your life at this time. There's not a better time to take, to take charge of your life. There's not some other time out there where it's like, oh, well, you know, when COVID is over, that's when I'll take charge of my life. Nope. Now, now is the time. Now is the time to decide. I am sovereign over my life and I'm going to take charge of my life. I am the one who gets to decide how much attention I put on this or that thing. I am the one who gets to decide where I place my intention, my attention, and whether I'm reacting or responding. You're the one who gets to decide these things. And one of the things that I will leave you with is that if you decide that now is the moment to start taking charge of your life amid a pandemic... Just think how freaking powerful you'll be in a couple months. Because once you've done this, you'll know, oh yeah, I can do anything. How many dreams will be born because you decided, I'm not waiting any longer. I'm not waiting any longer. I'm going to start making decisions that are aligned with who I know I truly am and what I know I truly want for my life. Now is the moment. You can't control the external circumstances, but you can absolutely take charge of your life. All right, that's today's podcast. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. You know you can continue the work and the fun if you want to. Head on over to yourcourageouslife.com forward slash begin 
and become a Your Courageous Life subscriber because as soon as you sign up, you get access to an entire library of worksheets and audios and other bonuses. And of course, you'll be receiving more courage in your inbox and who wouldn't love that? You can learn more about the Courageous Living Coach Certification at teamclcc.com. You can get the Courage Habit at your local bookseller, on Amazon, wherever you like. We can even connect on social media. I'm on Facebook at Your Courageous Life. So look for facebook.com forward slash Your Courageous Life. And I'm on Instagram as Kate Courageous. And I'd love to connect with you on Instagram. So here's to you using these courageous tools in your life and creating a real ripple effect of good. And again, thanks so much for listening. I love it that you're here.